much for attending this uh, this uh, webinar. Okay, this webinar uh, is organized this is the framework, the Internet Atlantic area, but in the framework one project that is readable. Sylvia, sorry to interrupt you, but the sound is very very bad, and uh, it seems yeah. I'm not the the only one. Uh, uh, I, I can see it in the chat, so I don't know if you can speak closer to your mic or do something else. But uh... I'm going to try. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. No. Speak a bit more, just to see. I'm going to, I don't know if you can hear me better now. Yeah, can you hear me better? better? Definitely yeah, better. better. I don't know what has happened because we have made it there. Okay, so I will I will try to start in this slide. Uh, we are strongly uh, we will like we will need your inputs, okay, as companies of the sector, because in this project we need we need uh, to the, to check your needs. Um, we are going to develop some technology that we want to be really useful for the for the for this sector, and we need to we need to receive your your feedback about your needs, and we also need that you you will be able to know what are the technologies that are in in the Atlantic area that could be useful for improve for the for the increase of your productivity in this sector. So please try to request. We have uh, we have opened um, the request slot until um, until 12 more or less. You know, a little late uh, earlier, uh, so please, if you didn't request any any between meetings, try to do right now, and and and, and, and of course, yes. it, uh, sure. sorry, someone has opened the microphone and I I hear the return. Okay, so please close, and of course, you have more information about our project in the in the website of the project. And um, um, and some recommendations only for this uh, for this presentation. Keep your microphones off. Uh, of course, uh, I, we have to inform that the webinar is being recorded uh, in order to have it available if you if you need uh, to see again. And for of course, feel free to share whatever you want in your, in our in all the social networks. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me say an, an additional thing for the bit too much. Um, for the B2B meetings, okay, it's quite easy to join the the meeting, the virtual meetings. Okay, you only have to go to the to the um, to the B2B match tool where you have booked your 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 meetings, and you only have to click in the camera, okay, because the the button is available and you it's quite easy. Should you don't need to download any application, it's start it's totally made there. Okay, thank you so much. And this is uh, the the technologies that are going to be present today. Uh, there are many of them, and there's uh, you can see here eight of the partners that are in the project, and they are the the technology developer, developers, and they are going to present the the first technologies. Okay, we are going to start with Alerion. Uh, Yvonne Diaz is going to present us the the first the the first mm, the first technologies. So, Yvonne, are you available? Yeah, good morning. I'm going to show my screen. Okay, share your screen, please. Can you see it? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, we can see. Yeah. Cool. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, as you already know, I'm Yvonne. I'm an engineer at Alerion, and for over five years, I have been working in aerospace industry as a software and system engineer. Uh, I will introduce you Alerion. First of all, Alerion was born in 2014 in Munich in, uh, and incubated in, at the European Space Agency Business Incubation Center uh, through the Technology Transfer Program. Since 2016, Alerion has been offering custom automated industrial inspection solutions for different infrastructures using our cutting edge technology that permits high precision navigation uh, up close to structures. Our dynamic team comprises uh, engineers with uh, research and industry experience in developing high performance computational software in machine learning based computer vision and in design in drones for extreme environments. Uh, so, uh, in Alerion, we have three main lines of work, intelligent drones, embedded edge computing, 
and custom UAV designs. Our intelligent drones can perform totally autonomous and automated uh, inspections thanks to our re relative up close navigations, which can be used to inspect complex multi structures, for example, uh, free blade wind turbines, bridges, pillars, uh, dams, or other structures. Uh, we use embedded high performance edge computing to analyze all data recollected on the drone during the inspections and create in situ reports. We perform real time data analysis based on or artificial intelligence based algorithms. And list, but and last but not least, sorry, our drone design. We build drones for extreme environments with unparalleled stability in high winds and designed to fly between one hour or 45 minutes. Now I will introduce you our latest developments for operation and maintenance. Uh, the first technology I'm going to present you is our autonomous up close relative navigation. Uh, in the video, uh, we will see how our drone flies around the uh, wind turbine, performing one blade inspection, going through the four sides of the blade, as well as how our navigation allows the drone to be always at a constant distance and perpendicular to the blade, as you can see in the video. Also, you can see the high quality images that we can take during the flight. Uh, we can perform nowadays free blade inspections in one flight. This means that we can go through all the wind turbine and recollect all the data at once, uh, considering that the drone uh, determines which blade is inspecting, which side of the blade, and always the distance of the blade with the same distance of the blade. Uh, all, the, all this technology uh, is already in the market. We perform multiple inspections with our drones all around the world. And we will continue doing so as soon as the coronavirus allows us. Our next inspections will be in Spain, in Zaragoza and Zamora. Uh, we are also planning to go to Denmark, Netherlands. Also, we will be in the Baltic Sea or in the United States in Colorado. Uh, we perform totally automated and repeatable high precision and quality inspections. This allows us to improve the planning and minimizes the personal risk, cost, and time. Uh, to support ground personnel like operators or pilot, we have an application that allows us to have direct connection with the drone and we can check in real time the images that uh, they are taken, uh, the status of the drone, like the distance to the blade, the blade part is being inspected, GPS position, drone battery, and many other useful data for the operator and the pilot. Uh, once the flight is over, uh, we can recollect all this data and analyze it in situ to verify the performance of the drone with our own applications. Uh, one of the potential application of this technology is to the implementation of a robotic arm to perform contact expansions of internal structure defects in the blade with an ultrasonic or LPS sensor. Uh, for example, uh, one of our analysis tools is the flight analysis tools, the one that you can see right now. Uh, this application shows uh, how uh, the drone performed the flight. In this graph, we can see in red the actual position of the drone during the flight and in blue, the waypoint that we had sent to perform it. Uh, the second technology I'm going to show you is a real-time damage detector. Uh, here you can see a small demo about our damage detection, but it actually runs while the inspection is being made. Uh, we use uh, intelligent artificial intelligence algorithms to detect different kind of damages like code detachment, erosion, or even dirtiness. Uh, so after landing, a damage report is created with all the damages and their context like asset position, damage type, date, blade, uh, blade side, etc. Here's a small uh, presentation of our for a report. Uh, this report is created inside the drone and is accessible within our flight and application. This really saves time 
because there is no need of sending the images to the cloud, even though you can do it. And you don't even need internet. You can access it directly from our application. And you can see the damages right after the inspection is made. Uh, like this, we are able to provide end-to-end -end solutions to our clients, and we can go beyond that and offer blade condition assessment and repair recommendations. Uh, that's all, so thanks for your time. If you're interested or you have any further questions, don't hesitate in requesting a B2B meeting or contact me directly uh, by my email. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for this for this interesting presentation. And we go ahead with the with the with the second presentation at the University of Seville. That is, uh, uh, Angel Rodriguez Castaño is going to present the technologies that they have available for this for, uh, for this section. Angel, please. Can you see my presentation? Okay, yes. Can you put it in full screen, yeah. please? Okay, perfect. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Angel Rodriguez. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, I have a problem with that. Okay. I'm professor at the University of Seville. Uh, I am also a researcher in a uh, uh, the robotics vision and control group. We are more than 70 people including uh, 13 professors and more than uh, 10 uh, postdoc, uh, uh, postdoc researchers. We are uh, mainly involved in projects uh, related to aerial robotics. That means for us aerial manipulation and also at, uh, managed aerial systems uh, in general. We are also very active in technology transfer with, uh, with a strong background, working with uh, SME companies, but also with, uh, with big companies like Airbus or, or Navantia. And uh, here you can see some figures from the last five years. With, uh, we've been involved in more than 55 research projects uh, with an external funding of more than uh, 12 million euros. This external funding comes mainly from the European Commission. I mean, we are mainly involved in uh, European uh, projects. Uh, in this project, we have uh, just finished uh, one uh, research project related with inspection and maintenance in the oil and gas industry, in which we have made some experiments and some testing in uh, several facilities in Spain, in the south of Spain, but also in, in Germany. Uh, I will show you uh, uh, some uh, pictures later, okay? And uh, uh, we are currently coordinating uh, also an European project related with uh, inspection of uh, uh, power uh, electricity, I mean, with uh, electric lines. Our main lines of work uh, related with this uh, kind of application are uh, in what we call intelligent navigation, aerial robotic manipulation, and also cooperation of multiple ideal systems. In the case of intelligent navigation, we call in intelligent navigation the functionality that allows us to fly safely in uh, any kind of a scenario. That means in a scenario with uh, uh, without GPS or with a uh, degraded uh, GPS signal, and also in a confined space when we have to, uh, of course, avoid collisions and detect all the surrounding environment in which we apply uh, SLAM algorithms to, to, to build a map, but also to locate and uh, to perform the mission inside that kind of scenario. In the area of robotic manipulation, our core expertise is the design and development of uh, arms, of robotic arms that we can attach to a drone and uh, in different manners. And, and the idea and what we have tested is the uh, we place the drone close to the uh, operation point and then uh, moving the arms in a coordinated way, we can uh, perform uh, inspections while touching the surface that it is uh, being uh, uh, monitored, okay? And in the cooperation of multiple aerial system, we are, uh, we are, we've been, uh, we have just finished an European project related to media production in which the goal is to, 
to uh, to produce the TV signal of a cycling competition and that kind of uh, linear competition. And the director, the producer of the images, just uh, give uh, some uh, some uh, uh, high level instructions to the drones, and then all the drones are coordinated, are cooperate to perform the uh, the TV signal for the for that uh, sport competition. Okay. We have uh, been working in that uh, area and also in the integration. We are currently working in the integration of this uh, kind of operation in the in the airspace, in which uh, what it is called the US space or UTM functionalities in the, in the aeronautics uh, community. In this sense, I'm going to focus in the two first technologies that are more related to the operation that uh, I think are more suitable for this kind of, of applications. The first one, uh, what we call intelligent navigation, we are combining uh, GNSS receivers, mainly GPS, with LiDAR and vision to uh, locate and navigate a uh, drone in uh, GNSS denied environments or in uh, scenarios with uh, degraded GPS uh, signal. As uh, you will see in this uh, short video, we consider moving, in this case, you are, what you are watching is a drone navigating inside a sewer pipe. This is a, a project with uh, the utility company, water utility company of Seville, in which we have to put a drone below the surface to navigate through this kind of pipes in which their, the level of water can be as high as uh, 15 uh, centimeters. In this case, we are navigating without uh, any kind of, of course, of GPS signal. And in this other uh, uh, short video, you can see the experiments that we perform in the European project uh, uh, AeroArms. In this case, uh, what we are doing is uh, navigating to contact our arms in a in a cement plant in the in the south of Spain. Okay, in this case, the GPS signal was very was really bad in some of the places. With uh, the, there were also many problems with the with the compass due to the magnetic uh, the metallic nature of uh, all the of all the uh, uh, facility right there. And in the right side of the picture, you can see the the map what we are seeing using the lidar while while we are navigating inside that uh, that area. Uh, moreover, in this case, yes, let me just a little bit. We are in the in the what we are performing right here. It is an inspection of uh, the deck of a bridge. Okay, the idea is to place the drone in contact with the bridge and then to measure uh, of the position of the drone related to a Leica station. So what we are measuring is the uh, deflection of the deck in, in this bridge. Okay, in this environment, for example, we have uh, uh, some GPS coverage and GPS signal outside of the deck, but as soon as we get the drone below the deck, then the GPS signal is uh, really uh, degraded so we need to combine all the sensors to to get uh, to have a uh, to place the the drone safely in contact with the with the deck and finally this is the the images for the uh, for the uh, in which we can try to follow several uh, moving targets in a in a ground in a ground uh, facility okay uh, and the next technology that I wanted you and I wanted to to show you is uh, the custom uh, aerial manipulator design and development. We uh, design and develop several kinds of uh, of arms with passive joints, or, but also with uh, compliant joints. With one arm or two arms, we can add, uh, for example, uh, a pole to have enough separation from the from the blades to the position of the arms in such a way that we can fly uh, uh, close enough to the point of operation, typically a pipe, for example, and then we can extend the arms and uh, 
place the arms in contact with the surface and to use entity sensors or or do any other kind of me measurements that requires uh, contact okay so that's uh, all if you if you request a meeting please go to the to the uh, online tool or you can use my email that you can see here so thank you very much okay thank you very much uh, Angel for your presentation quite interesting and um, we are going going with the with the next one that came from the aerospace technology center from uh, Catec from 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 Seville also Irene Eras is going to present the next technologies Irene please Okay, good morning. Can you see my screen? Yes, but we are okay. see the presentation. We only asked, we are we are seeing I don't know if we see your presentation of the Angel on the Angel screen. I think Angel you should uh, uh, you should close your your sharing your sharing screen and Irene should should okay. Irene Okay now try now. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's great. Okay, <laughs> thank perfect. you so much. So, good morning. My name is Irene Eras. I'm a senior researcher of Falacatec from the Department of Material and Processes. I'm going to introduce you the Advanced Center for Aerospace Technologies, uh, called CATEC. Well, CATEC is a research center in place close to Sevilla and is managed and controlled by the Andalusian Foundation for Aerospace and Development, FADA. The main goal of FADA-CATEC is the research and development of aerospace ready technologies. But also CATEC has the objective to be a key tool in the generation and the management of the aerospace scientific knowledge in coordination with companies interested, universities or other research organizations. We have three main research areas in CATEC where CATEC de develops the technology for the aerospace sector. They are the materials and processes, avionics and systems, and robotics and automation. CATEC is divided in these three different departments, but they, we have very close collaboration between us, holding continuous meeting in order to keep up to date and use the synergies between the departments. Regarding the objective of this webinar, uh, FADACATE has large experience in developing technological uh, solutions for aerial vehicles, as well as large experience in materials inspection with non-destructive tests. Currently, we are developing the technologies from the aerospace to adopt in operation and maintenance in renewable plants, mainly wind farms, concentrated solar power plants, and photovoltaic solar plants. We have divided uh, our expertise in these three main lines, all related with autonomous inspections over main aerial vehicles, but different non-destructive techniques. First is with directly visual inspection, Second is without contact by infrared thermography, and third is inspection with contact. So now I will start with inspection without contact in a visual way. This technology, uh, we have been improving the navigation capabilities for the autonomous operation by algorithm develop and simulation validation. The autonomous navigation include detection of obstacles, tracking of mobile objects, tree mapping, accurate geolocalization, and precise navigation. Uh, the real-time strategies with locomotion timer required during two adaptation to 3D environments is one of the main differences with, with respect to ground robots. Uh, main benefits of these technologies include the possibility to analyze large areas of a power plant in short times with digital register possible to compare with previous studies. Second line of activity uh, is related to the inspection of uh, with drones without contact with infrared technology. So, uh, we are working with passive infrared thermography inspection. We have started with inspection in wind blades. You can see in the video. Uh, and we can detect the structural information the previous steps so that we can detect scratches, delamination, or impacts in the wind blades. In this line, we have started with passive thermography in concentrated solar power plants. As you can see in the video, you can detect the vacuum loss in the heat collector elements, in the absorber tubes, the liquids in the hot spot in the piping, 
or some problems of insulation in the salt tanks. Um, last technology I'd like to present. Okay. Uh, is related to the inspection with contact in drones. CATEC, in collaboration with the University of Sevilla and with the Instituto Superior de Lisboa, has developed the first drone able to perform contact inspection in industrial environments. This platform can be adapted to different capabilities. We have coupled the robotic arm in the UAV and this allows the inspection with contact when it's required. And therefore, we have test. The first, we start with dedicated inspections to detect failure in metallic components. And now we are adapting the uh, robotic arm with the alt ultrasonic sensor to be more accurate inspection in composite component, such as wind blades. So thanks. And if you are interested in contact with us, you can request a B2B meeting or contact directly with us. Thank you so much, Irena. Uh, introduces also. And now we have the next uh, the next speaker is Jonas Nelov from the University West of England, Bristol. Uh, Jonas, are you available? Jonas, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we hear you a little uh, lower. Can you try to speak? Is this better? A little better. Uh, I will share my screen. Uh, share. Yeah. Sorry, Irene, could you close your microphone, please? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Um, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonas Nilov. I will be presenting the technology offer from the University of the West of England, Bristol. Our technology offer is custom UV design and manufacture. Uh, first, a few words about our organization and the durable team. The University of the West of England is a public research university located in the city of Bristol within the United Kingdom. The university has around 30,000 students, including around 7,000 postgraduate students spread across multiple campuses. Uh, particular research ranks of the university are in the fields of engineering and computer science and others. Uh, our durable work is based mainly on Friendship Campus within the Department of Engineering, Design and Mathematics and in the Bristol Robotics Laboratory, the BRL. The university's Friendship Campus uh, is home to the BRL. Um, the Bristol Robotics Laboratory is the leading and largest academic centre for robotics research in the UK. It is also one of the largest robotics laboratories, if not the largest in Europe. The laboratory is a collaboration between the University of the West of England, Bristol and the University of Bristol. It is home to a community of academics and businesses, as well as a dedicated indoor drone flying arena. Research in the BRL involves robotics, UAVs, uh, UGVs, unmanned ground vehicles, machine learning, assisted living and soft robotics, as well as many other fields. There is also a vast incubator space for up to 70 high tech startup companies and early stage companies. The UV Bristol team working on durable is mainly comprised of three people Dr. Matthew Studley, Dr. Steve Wright, and me, Jonas Nilov. Dr. Matthew Studley is an associate head of the department of the Department of Engineering, Design, and Mathematics. Uh, Dr. Studley's main interest areas are in the fields of robotics, machine learning, robotics forms, and technology ethics. Dr. Steve Wright is a senior research fellow in avionics and aircraft systems. Uh, Dr. Steve Wright specializes in avionics systems, electronics, and software. Lastly, I am a research associate in aerial robotics. My work mainly involves unmanned aerial systems design, hardware prototyping, and development. My key interest areas are battery systems, propulsion systems, aircraft design, and ultra high endurance drone development. As part of Durable, our main technology offer involves custom UAV design and manufacture. We can provide custom ready to fly UAV platforms for a wide variety of payloads and operational environments that enable high performance at a relatively low cost. 
Um, so we can build custom uh, multi-rotor unmanned aerial vehicles developed by either durable to fly payloads and sensors developed by either durable partners or other organizations. Um, the aircraft we have expertise with range from very small to very large. For example, the drone in the top picture is a very small and agile drone with flight times of about five minutes. The drone in the bottom picture is a much larger vehicle and slower vehicle and is capable of about three hours of flight time. So there can be a lot of variation in the vehicle specification. The aircraft payloads can include robotic arms, onboard computers, standard cameras, thermal cameras, radio frequency transmitters, and other systems. The total payload mass, whilst maintaining a flight endurance of at least 30 minutes, can vary from around 100 grams to around 10 kilograms. Uh, this is while keeping costs very low and aircraft total mass within 20 kilo. Um, if flight times of less than 30 minutes are acceptable or aircraft mass can go over 20 kilo, then payloads heavier than 10 kilograms can be flown. Uh, and for reference, 10 kilo for a 20 kilo aircraft flying for 30 minutes is very unusual, um, but we can definitely make that happen. Um, with payloads uh, lighter than 10 kilograms, uh, real world flight endurance can be between 30 and 60 minutes. Uh, and if the payload is particularly lightweight, then flight times can realistically reach around 90 minutes. Um, we can modify the aircraft and its systems so that they can be operated automatically in a wide variety of environments without sacrificing stability. For instance, uh, as part of the durable project, our university team is developing a hot environment drone battery system. Uh, this would enable high endurance drone operation in, for example, 40 degrees Celsius environments, such as in uh, Portugal or Spain in the summer, uh, without damaging the batteries due to overheating or other issues. Um, in the durable project, the main application we see for these custom drones is for aerial inspection. We believe that these drone systems could be applied to either small-scale or large-scale aut automated visual and thermal inspection of photovoltaic solar panels. Um, and also because we can carry so much payload for such a long time, you can carry several different, cam several different camera systems on one aircraft. You don't need to fly two drones with, uh, say, a visual camera and a thermal camera. You can put them both on the same drone. Um, another application would be to fly any of the payloads developed by other durable project partners. Um, we specifically created a modular aircraft design that allows us to tremendously vary the payload mass um, so that we can better accommodate our durable partners. So with more or less the same aircraft, shifting the payload from 100 grams to 10 kilo with very little modification. Um, this is to enable you to test your equipment as quickly and with as little modifications as possible. And thirdly, the drone can be equipped to carry significant computer and radio equipment on board so that your collected data is automatically processed during the flight so that you can um, uh, beam the data back to your ground station and start processing while the aircraft is flying. Uh, this equipment is usually quite heavy, uh, but with this solution, weight is not a problem. Um, the main benefit we see is the development of relatively low cost, high performance, stable airborne platforms. Um, the aircraft can be adapted for your specific payload mission and environmental conditions. Uh, we can also work to adapt the aircraft system to fit within a particular EU drone legislation category. Uh, so whether it's um, uh, open category or a, or a specified category, that should be fine. Uh, and finally, we can implement systems engineer, engineering methods to provide evidence of the reliability of an aircraft system, such as uh, your autopilot system or other avionics. Um, if you believe that our technology solutions can be of benefit to you, uh, please feel free to book a meeting. Uh, for those of you that have already booked a meeting, we, I will see you later on today. Um, for meeting bookings on the b 2 match system, please contact me. For any other inquiries, feel free to contact uh, Dr. Matthew Studley, Dr. Steve Wright, or myself. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Jonas. Uh, 
also very interested. Um, um, we need uh, we need to we, we have a new presentation from the Instituto Superior Técnico from Lisboa. Uh, from, uh, Alberto Vale is going to present. Alberto, are you ready? Yes, thank you, Silvia. Can you hear me? Yes. First of all, I'm going share? to share my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just a few seconds, please. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Uh, wait a minute. Yes, right now. Okay. Oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you all for attending this webinar. My name is Albert Val. Uh, I'm a researcher at the Institute Superior Technic, IST. IST is the largest engineering school in Portugal with several undergraduate, master, and PhD programs. IST is spread in, in Lisbon uh, by three campus uh, with more than uh, 11,000 of students. Some of them are PhD students and more than 20% are international and almost 900 of professor researchers. IST accommodates uh, 23 research and development units and two of them are participating in the durable project, namely the ISR, Institute of Systems and Robotics, represented by Professor Pedro Lima, and the Institute of Plasmas and Nuclear Fusion, represented by me. Uh, besides the durable pro project, uh, IST participate in several national, European, international uh, projects uh, related with robotics. So, <clears throat> The main lines of work uh, uh, of IST are three, the inspection with autonomous mobile robots, underground mobile robots, UGVs, uh, guidance, navigation, control solution for these mobile robots, and 3D reconstruction of the environment. So uh, the technology that they can offer in this project uh, with UGVs is the inspection without contact. It means that the UGV can perform inspection of solar panels with contactless technology, it means to transporting cameras, depth sensors, sonars, and something like this. And we have potential applications uh, using the, this UGV to perform the inspection operations of solar panels without contact. Uh, the benefits, we can perform efficient remote inspection manipulation, uh, opportunity to perform inspection during the day, but especially during the shutdown at the night with or without operators in the field. Uh, we provide logistic management to optimize the plan and trajectories of se and sequence of operation and can be applied not only for a single UGV, but also for a multiple UGV in collaboration with a fleet of drones in a simultaneous operation. The same UGV can be performed inspection, uh, but now with contact uh, technologies. So the, the same inspection can be transforming in operations to perform simple, uh, for instance, maintenance operations, some repair if possible. Uh, the main difference is to uh, transport uh, uh, equipment uh, then can perform these operations in solar panels, such, such like to detect cracks, bubbles, and dirt on the pal panels, and uh, also perform some small repair or even replacement in the field. So it can be uh, used by uh, performed by manipulator once again with or without human operators. Uh, the other solution that we can perform provide to this UGV is the guidance, navigation, and control. So uh, it means that we can perform localization in real time, uh, given a for instance a solar farm. Uh, path planning, it means to identify the best trajectory and path following to follow these uh, optimized trajectories with obstacle detection and avoidance. Uh, there are different potential applications, mainly is the navigation on the solar farm and, and also wind farms to provide support to the drones, as you'll see in the next slide. Um, and we can perform inspection maintenance, just a, a single panel, a particular panel, or a set of panels, or even to the entire global farm with and without human. Um, which are the benefits? Security and surveillance with obstacle detection and avoidance. We can plan schedule automatic operation in the farms where transportation is required, and optimization of log logistic management. Once again, the UGV can work alone or can work in a team of different UGVs, or, or even to collaborate with the drones. Uh, this solution, the UGV, uh, 
can work not only for uh, contact or contactless inspection, but also to provide support to the U for the U UAVs. It means that UGV becomes a, a power of support uh, to perform, uh, uh, to provide sh charging uh, as a charging station or communications support as a mobile repeater, or even a, a mobile landing platforms for the UAVs. Uh, so, which are the main benefits of that? Uh, so we can pro pro provide this uh, uh, a support station and use the UAVs for a long period of time, uh, not only for providing uh, power charging, but also for uh, a communication. It means that we can spread the UAVs for a large area with several UGVs providing uh, the communication. However, the UGV can also use not only for the UAVs, but also for two other mobile platforms. For instance, small robots that are uh, navigating al along the solar panels and the UGV can provide not only electrical power supply, but also which type of materials like water for cleaning or so on of the solar panels. Finally, the last uh, technological uh, solution is related to our 3D reconstruction. So we are to we have to navigate uh, in a scenario. So we need a, a mapping of the scenario, not only for the navigation of the UGV and also for the ADs, but also for uh, for human operators to. Um, monitorizing uh, what the mobile platforms are doing in the in the field. So uh, this mapping is a 3D reconstruction able to support navigation with virtual and augmented reality needs. Uh, once again, the benefits are logistic managed to optimize the planet trajectories in and sequence of operations in real time, and coordinator uh, coordination of a fleet of UGVs and UAVs. He also able to characterize the environment for monitoring vegetation, to prevent shadows appearing for solar panels, uh, and other uh, issues that can occur in, uh, occur in this field. So if you are interested in a B2B uh, meeting that I invite you, just go into the link uh, and you'll see on the, on the uh, right corner uh, an option, the participants, you'll just to click there and find my name and just another click to uh, sketch a meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop my. Nice. Thank you, Alberto. Nice. Uh, okay. Now we have the, the, the next okay. presentation. Okay. We have the next presentation at uh, the uh, Technology Center for the North of Spain from Basque Country. It's Lortec. Uh, Lexuri Vasquez and Pablo Lopez are going to present. Lexuri, are you, are you available? Yes. Thank you. I will share my screen. Can you see it now? Uh, yes, yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So my name is Lesuri Vasquez, and I work as a researcher in Lortec. I will show you three additive manufacturing technologies oriented to maintenance, and after me, my colleague Pablo will explain the technologies we can use for inspection. So um, Lortec is a non-profit private technological center, highly specialized in advanced manufacturing and smart factories. And especially we work in joining technologies, additive manufacturing and industry 4.0 technologies, including non-destructive testing um, techniques applied to mainly metallic materials. Our goal is to generate and transfer excellent knowledge based on the state of the art technologies to multi-sectorial network in order to improve their compet competitiveness. Here, I um, remark three areas where we work and that are applicable to maintenance and operation tasks in energy sector. The first one is uh, joining technologies. We use different uh, power sources like laser and electric arc, and we also use different welding techniques like friction, resistance spot, and flash. All of them are applied to a wide extension of metallic materials. 
The next one is the additive manufacturing. We have different technologies based on powder bed fusion and directed energy deposition techniques. With uh, these techniques, we can manufacture or repair parts uh, with the design are in a CAD file, obtaining high complex geometries or large uh, parts with minimum waste of material and in short lead times. Finally, we also want to remark the inspection with non-destructive testing. Then we can apply active thermography based on induction and optical excitation experience. We also can process uh, monitoring via passive thermography. And finally, the detect defects in metallic and non-metallic components. So now I will explain uh, the first additive manufacturing technology, which is called SLM or selective laser melting. This is a technology based on powder bed fusion and it needs metallic powder as feed stock and laser as power source. With this, we can manufacture highly complex and detailed parts. We only need a CAD file with the design of the part and the material in order to obtain the part in a short lead time and with high accuracy. The potential application for uh, energy sector is for maintenance operations like manufacturing uh, of broken parts on demand for substitution avoiding long stoppages. And the main benefits that we can obtain with this is to manufacture new parts in a short lead time, the possibility of redesign for weight saving, as you can see in the images uh, in the bottom uh, right, we see a, a blind cone and we have or we obtain a, another part that fits the same uh, requirement of strength but which is uh, lighter. We also have the possibility with those redesigns to avoid numerous part assemblies. Also we, we obtain maximum material savings as we just uh, use the material that is part of that part the rest of the material can be reused for the manufacturing of the next um, part. We also avoid having big spaces to, um, to have parts in stock in order to, to substitute the ones that are normally broken. And we don't need large production in, in order to, to be cost effective. The next additive manufacturing technology is called LMD or laser metal deposition. And in this case, it's based on directed energy uh, deposition. In this case, we also need a metallic powder as feedstock and laser as power source. We, apart from manufacturing, we can repair complex and high value add, uh, added parts. And again, we just need the cut with the design of the part or the add-on and the material in order to obtain the part or the repa reparation in a short lead time. So the main application is for repairing complex and detailed high value parts which have been uh, broken or worn their surfaces, avoiding long stoppages. It also offers us the formation of protect protective coatings on the surfaces with, um, with resistant materials to extend the lives of this part. So the main benefits in this case is to repair uh, broken parts in a short lead time, to extend the life of this part, to, um, to have high quality reparations, again, material savings, and to avoid uh, big spaces for parts in stock. Finally, the last additive manufacturing technology that I want to share with you, it's called WAM or Wire and Arc Additive Manufacturing. It is also a directed energy deposition technology, but in this case, we just need metallic wire instead of power as feedstock 
and electric R as power source. So uh, in this case, it offers us a manufacturing and repairing, but it is oriented for large part dimensions. Then uh, again, we only need the CAD file with the design of the part or the add-on in, in, case, in the case of reparations uh, in order to obtain the final part in a short lead time. So it offers um, the fabrication and reparation of broken large parts, avoiding long stoppages. The main benefits of this technology is the manufacturing and reparation in a short lead time to extend the life of parts. Uh, it also offers maximum material savings if we compare with the manufacturing and reparations uh, when we use uh, conventional subtractive processes. We also have the possibility to avoid numerous part assembly. Uh, again, we don't need big spaces to have parts in stock in order to be used when some of them are broken and we don't need large production in, in order to be cost effective. So now, uh, Pablo, we continue showing you some inspection um, technology. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. I will share my screen. Okay, let's see. If I can. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is Pablo Lopez Duralde and I work in the control and evaluation area of Lortec. Specifically, I work in the field of non-destructive testing, especially focused on thermography. I will focus today on active thermography. What differentiates this technique from the passive one is that an, an excitation source is needed to generate a thermal gradient in the sample. In this way, and thanks to a thermal camera, we can record the behavior of the material before and after this excitation with the aim of detecting surface and or subsurface defects that uh, can alter the normal behavior of, of the material. At Lortec, we have three types of excitation available, laser lamps and induction. I will summarize them very briefly. I will be able to go deeper into private meetings if anyone is interested. Generally, laser excitation has been used in samples where it is possible to sweep with the laser and follow with this path with the camera. In this way, if there is any surface crack in the material, this will cause a barrier effect in the heat diffusion that will generate areas with an abnormal thermal gradient. In composite, composite materials, we generally use flash lamps or halogen lamps. With the first one, with the flash lamp, a high energy pulse is provided to the sample and cooling is recorded for, an specific, for a specified time, depending on the, on the defect and the material. After that, different processes can be applied to the recording, such as Fourier transform, with which we manage to go from the time domain to the frequency domain. In these phase images, defects can be detected, such as the laminations, for example, and depending on the frequencies at which it is detected and after a detailed study, even we, we can even define the sizes and depths of those defects. Allogen lamps are used in a very similar way, but the excitation times are, times are somewhat longer. Or even pulse trains can be generated can be generated. Now, this is known as locking technique. Finally, we have induction thermography. For this technique, uh, an alternating current is passed through a wiring close, close to the sample to be inspected. This current generate, generates a magnetic field, which in turn causes induced currents in the material, which are the key to detecting defects. If there is a crack on the surface of the sample, depending on its orientation, with respect to the currents, it will cause a deviation of the sample, of the, of the same, sorry. If the crack and currents are perpendicular or form an angle other than zero degrees. This deviation will cause there to be areas with a greater concentration of currents and therefore generate different types of heating and cooling. The information is then collected with the camera and is then is processed using proprietary software in order to obtain an image where defects, for example, cracks, usually, they are identified. Apart from thermography, to detect defects in solar panels, there is another technique called electroluminescence. Uh, solar cells convert uh, solar energy into electricity. However, they also have the characteristic of being able to emit light if they are connected to an electric current. By inducing an electric current on the cell, it emits lights in a spectrum center at, at 1,150 nanometers. 
the more radiation it emits, the more efficient it is. And the radiation is emitted throughout the cell. So, it, so that if there is a crack or a deficiency in the conductive layers, it is reflected in the image captured with cameras especially sensitive to this wavelength. This is the, a brief summary of the different technologies that we have at LORTEC in, in terms of non-destructive analysis using thermography and electroluminescence. If you are interested in any request in requesting any B2B meeting, you can send a request to either Lesuri or me, or you can contact us on the, on the email. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, both of you. Uh, and we go with the with the with the presentation of the Dublin City University, Alessio Di Alessio Di Liberto. Uh, should be ready now. Alberto, uh, are you? Yes, hello the all right, can you hear okay. me and can you see the presentation? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, so, uh, well, uh, dear all, my name is Alessio Di Liberto from DCU, Dublin City University. And uh, this presentation is about uh, radio emission spectroscopy for wind turbine system. Um, for this task, the team in DCU is formed by Professor Patrick Mernelli and me, Alessio Di Liberto. Uh, Patrick Mernelli is a world leader in the field of advanced X-ray diffraction imaging technology, not destructive radio frequency metrology for plasma processing, so using the technique of radio emission spectroscopy, and the copper light materials. Uh, he served as the head of the School of Electronic Engineering DCU, Dublin City University, and is currently uh, a founder investigation F investigator in Science Foundation Ireland's Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre, I form and co-director of the Nanomaterials Processing Laboratory (NPL) in, in which I take part in this year. And and me, um, um, micro and radio frequency design engineer with around 15 years of international experience on military defence system such as electronic warfare, active and passive ones, aerospace guidance and surveillance devices. Uh, uh, radio frequency identifi identification and tracking devices using mixed radio frequency technique, passive and semi-passive and active. And uh, IoT, these Internet of Things devices for control and collection of remote data using multi-radio frequency and Internet-based hybrid solution. So uh, regarding the task, uh, main lines of work for this task I divided into three main milestones uh, that I call phase alpha, phase beta and phase gamma. So phase alpha, that is the current phase of the technology I'm going to propose during the next slides, is about data collection of radio frequency emission in the range in between one kilohertz and two gigahertz. And uh, essentially, preliminary stage is using, uh, for, for proof of concept, codes, uh, so out of, of the shelf devices, uh, such as uh, software defined radio, modified software defined radio. The phase beta, the second phase, is about design of experiment, DOE, so it is based on the experiment and after the data collection radio frequency in order to be optimized. So, such as, as I was saying, hardware and software optimization, optimization based on the on the data analysis because it's not only hardware and software but also a statistic analysis of the data received on the phase alpha. In the phase gamma, the third and the last phase is about the first prototype concept, and uh, so as a consequence, uh, pre-engineering documentation such as bill of material, Gerber files for hardware, firmware, software, and uh, yeah. Well, uh, the first technology we are going to propose, we are proposing, is based on the radio emission spectroscopy technique. And uh, in particular, the first one is regarding the near and far field sensors. So, uh, uh, essentially, uh, this technique is using a customized design E field and B field sensors that, that are electric and magnetic fields. Uh, ideally to be put on board on drones and then connected to dedicated electronic circuitry using hardware and software, I would say also firmware, to analyze data remotely and then collecting data. The potential application we are going to, to, to use this technology is to remote health status check analysis of wind turbines from drones. 
So as you can imagine, the benefit would be reliability of measurement, of course, because no affected by human error. So no human resources needed in loco. So no personal in loco. Also regarding safety, just imagine the height of the of the wind farm, for example, and time and so money saving. The second technology we are going to propose is also based on the radio emission spectroscopy technique and is about smart grid intelligent sensors. So uh, essentially smart grid network using radio frequency intelligent sensors inside wind turbines, nacelles, uh, connected through ad hoc wireless networks. Let's consider, for example, mesh networks, distributed mesh networks using multi different frequency, ISM frequency bands, for example, to share relevant data remotely. So what's in this case, not in local person. So also in this case, potential application is to check remotely the health and the status check analysis of wind turbine using a gateway on board of the drone. And uh, of course, the benefits also in this case are real time monitor of an entire site. So no one to one wind turbine. So because of the mesh networks, so real time monitor of the entire site at once, no single turbines. And, uh, and thus remote access to data through security Internet, for example, IPv6. So from all over the world. So using a simple website dedicated to the at the customer side. So well, uh, well, if you're interested to know more details about our technology, just contact us and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Alessio. And now we go ahead with the last presentation that comes from Nistia, the University in the, in the southwest of, of France. And uh, Pachi Bernard is going to present. Pachi, are you available? Hi, Silvia. <coughs> yeah, Hello. I'm available. Okay. Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, hello, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, okay. Try to share your presentation because we are. Okay. We have seen your screen, but, your, but not your presentation. Now? Now, yes. Okay. Okay. We, we are a little nice. late, so let's try to be quick. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I will try. Okay, so hi everyone. I will start by introducing a little bit my organization. STI is before anything else an engineering school. We also have two other main activities which are helping small companies to grow and the research activity. I will uh, develop a little bit more of this one. STI manages five technical platforms. Each of them has its on engineering speciality. I will make a focus on two of them. The first one is PEPS. It is the platform where I'm involved. Just one word about me. My name is Pachi Berra. I'm a research engineer who works from 10 years now uh, with the human factor department of Airbus in a few research and projects. We work in the multimodal interaction uh, research area trying to design a human-centered complex interactive system for the next generation of flights. We are specialized into the development of complex interactive systems using new technologies like uh, virtual and augmented reality displaying system. The second one is Composite Albur, where my colleague uh, Guillaume Bayou is involved. Guillaume will introduce to you after my talk the water jet abrasive technology. In this platform, they are specialized in the robotized processes for the placement of composite materials. So I already introduced to you person Compositador. So just one word about the third platform named Adimado. This one is more focused into additive manufacturing solutions and works into aeronautic fields by exploring new additive manufacturing processes to design flying parts. And to finish the STI introduction, I need to say we have also access to two other platforms in STI ecosystem. CIMECOMP, dedicated to the numerical simulation for the resistance of materials. And the last one, ENERGIA, dedicated to the development of engineering solutions for renewable energies using smart grid 
for example. About the technology, uh, I will present to you two uh, software technology. Uh, maybe you will notice the TRL is quite low uh, because uh, they will be uh, totally developed uh, during the Dura project. And uh, we are expecting at the end uh, um, uh, TRL uh, as a five. And uh, you can see the, the the video is the video play played uh, is uh, is the presentation of the current uh, development. Sorry, so, can, so can you minimize your the this the, the small screen that is on your on your on your right the robotics aeronautics screen? Yeah, sorry. Okay, because we cannot see well your your images. Okay, can you yeah. minimize this? Yeah, so sometimes no, it could be it's still being shared. And uh, now, now it's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I have a delay. In fact, when I click, uh, it passed a few times uh, before to have the action due to my, my bad connection. I'm sorry. Sometimes uh, it could be difficult to develop an automatic navigation for vehicles, and in few cases, a manual navigation is needed. With UAV and UGV, it's normally done in situ by an operator remotely driving the vehicle with a remote controller and getting simple RGB camera feedback. In the project Durable, we will develop a virtual pit to help this operator to achieve the task in the most efficient way than it's possible. The idea is to get a really immersive and efficient 3D cockpit environment for helping navigation, especially through the PV solar panel and wind turbine fields. The 3D and the immersion give us the opportunity to explore contextual UI. That means getting the right information at the right time to release the operator multi payload. We will also explore the development of two main concepts. The first one is getting the surrounding environment point cloud representation displayed into the cockpit. This functionality uh, will be developed thanks to the LiDAR sensor data. It allows the operator to really evaluate the distance between the vehicle and the obstacle and avoid the collision. The second one is, the, is a 3D GPS map. This function could help the operator to navigate into the real world. The cockpit is useful also for the supervision of the maintenance task. The 3D map could be used to track a new AV army dedicated to the default detection task, for example. It could also be used to display supervision additional information coming from different sensors on ground or on board. As it's only software, this kind of solution is easy to maintain, to update with new functionalities, and is totally customizable to the operator needs or the company needs. Plugged plug with a simulator, this operative system will also be used to train the pilot during the formation and, and so long use exactly the same system during the formation and the, and the operation. About the second technology, you will get the slide uh, soon. Um, so in the maintenance area, maintenance is often an expert task. This task could be risky and expensive, especially in the wind turbine and the PV plants maintenance area. The operator needs to be in situ into risky environment during persistent manual tasks, which can't be done automatically. STI will develop a software module command to remotely control a B-harm robot that will avoid the risk and also reduce the cost of the operator travel. We will explore the opportunity to develop a natural integration thanks to a motion capture system. We will track the whole upper body movement of the operator to control at real time the behind robot. This control will take place from the previous presented virtual cockpit solution. As that, the operator can drive to the maintenance control point and when it's needed, switch from the navigation environment to the robot control environment. With the onboard sensors, we will explore the opportunity to use the 3D to help the operator to achieve the task by displaying augmented information. We will also explore, as we will do 
with the navigation, the potential of the LiDAR point cloud surrounding environment displaying to help the operator to understand his surrounding environment. We think, we believe a, biomim a biomimetism arm robot control solution is making sense when a remote persistent manual task is needed in a risky operation. Now I will give the talk to my colleague Guillaume Bayou, who will introduce to you the Waterjet Abrasive Machine Solution. Guillaume, please. Guillaume? Um, Pachi, Guillaume yeah. is not in the conversation. Oh, uh, really? No. Uh, so try to present this. I think that he was, he was uh, fall down at the very end. So try to present. Oh, okay, <laughs> I can try. Okay. I think that he, he fell down, but I don't know. Okay, it's not it's yeah. not my speciality, but uh, but I will try. Okay, uh, so uh, the team of Compositador is working of the study of uh, a, a, a new new technology uh, named Abrasive Water Jet Blind Machining. In fact, it's a portable a portable robot uh, for composite repairing. It's a machine using water jet ab uh, abrasion technology. It's a it's a really um, easy to transport a system that could be done, uh, uh, it's an MD system. It's, it's totally adapted to the composite uh, repairing machining and it's already used uh, for the, the Airbus uh, uh, machining uh, reparation. And uh, on, on uh, so the potential application uh, about the potential application uh, but it's a, it's a, a really um, designed solution to to avoid the transport of a wind blade for example and uh, you could uh, achieve the, the 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 composite reparation directly in situ by uh, transporting the abras abrasive water jet uh, machine uh, directly um, at the bottom of the wind uh, the wind turbine so you just need to to put up the wind uh, blade uh, put that on the ground and uh, directly uh, machine the repetition in situ uh, as that you can avoid uh, the risk of uh, try to to do a repetition um, in the wind turbine or the cost of the transport of the wind blade. So if you have uh, more uh, question, technical question about this uh, specific uh, technology, uh, please contact uh, Guillaume uh, by, uh, by the B2B tool uh, to, to ask him uh, a meeting. And if you have uh, any question about the two first uh, soft, uh, software technologies, please contact me and uh, I will be uh, really happy to answer to you to your question. And if you have uh, any question or, or any ideas of research project opportunities or industrial uh, partnership, please contact Olivier Lard and uh, he will be really happy to, to talk with you uh, to try to, to, to mount a, a project together. Uh, thank you very much, Patrick, for your presentation. Now, all the technology presentation have been, has been presented, but I'm going to show you, uh, to explain you in, the, in a very easy issue, how you can request your B2B meetings, okay? Because there are many questions regarding this, and I'm going to, and I'm going to explain you. If you go to the, to the website that I have it, the, the website for the participant portal, the first thing that you have to go is to click here that say login, and make login, okay? If you make the login, you can see in the, when you will see your picture or your name, and you will see my attendance. Please check that you have it available to assist to the bilateral meetings, okay? Because it should be clicked, okay? If it is not, you can do it, or you can send an email to Nuria and, and Luisa, 
uh, that are in the email to solve this issue, okay? And then it's quite easy to have the the to have the the weekly meetings. You can go, for example, uh, to the to the technology to the technology website, and you can go directly to this link, and it will be redirected directly to the participant that is going to explain you the technology. And only clicking in meet, you are able. You are able to 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 request a meeting. If you have any problem, please write us, and we will solve it as soon as possible. Okay, but this is very easy. You can do it directly from that website, or of course, you can go here and you can you can click on the participant that is available for the two meeting and request. Okay, if the person that you are interested in is not available, of course, you can send. You can, for example, click here. And send them. Uh, try to send them an, a message uh, in order to request them to open an slot to have to be meetings. Of course, you can do it. Okay. Uh, and if you are if you are in the case that you are not uh, available for having meetings, write us. I don't know if there is any other if there is any other question regarding this. I don't. I cannot see. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if there is a. Any other question regarding this? I think it's not. So I have to get uh, to, to glad of, of your of your participation in this project in this uh, webinar. And of course, we are waiting for you at the beginning meeting to take <coughs> the feedback of your needed. Okay. Thank you so much, and enjoy the 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 beginning meetings. Thank you, Thank you Silva. Welcome. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.